Here we have New York Central T3, the only surviving T3 or T motor of any kind. This is the one of the cabs where the train heating boiler has been removed. You can see the exhaust stacks in the roof, door, uh, mitigate entrance to the propulsion room, engineer controls, standard resistance controller, as you'd see on a trolley, automatic train stop acknowledger, brake stand, DC amp meter, etc. Fireman side emergency brake, plywood, of course, on the windows, doors and window sashes. All colors are about the New York, City, New York Central green. Moving in, we see the louvers for the traction motor blower in here, which is the big box in the middle, you can't really see. Resistance grids are up in the roof. Contactors for the resistance grids are right at eye level for the entire length of the unit. You can see here's the motor for the traction motor blower. Compressor is on the other side. Moving into the opposite cab, we see the surviving train heat boiler. There are two boilers on this train for the passenger services. Opposite engineer stand. Same as the other. This shows the size of the engineering compartment with the firemen. And here we have the um, panograph units for where the um, where the New York Central utilized the overhead third rail for complex track arrangements. As you can see, there are the full set for both this and the adjacent S unit number, one number 100. There's your heating elements, more windows, the original windows there, and again doors inside for the thing. And then there's your auxiliary stand and other control units. Here are the sand bins for traction. Uh, moving into number 100, which is the original mainline electric locomotive, first real one ever built. 1904, tested till 1906. This one's interior is painted PC green, is painted a deeper New York Central green. Um, contactors are under the short hoods for the resistance banks. Spark chutes, of course, accompanying all of them. Um, various breakers and auxiliary equipment. But all that stuff fits neatly under the saddles. In the main room, we have the air compressor and engineer stand. It's approximately the same as number of the T1s over there. Moving in, we have your amp meters uh, and your air brake equipment, pressure gauges, engineer stand, I mean fireman stand over there with the emergency brake, not much else. Um, I'm not sure what happened to the original heat boiler. Might have been modified, might have been just this box here. Um, other side you can't really see through the light, but there's the interior of S1 number 100. And the other side of this, the other saddle is the same as the other, the other short hood is the same as the first with same type of control gear, duplicate. There are four sets, four equal sets. Um, well, at least four, Four per two per side. This is one number one and two. Other side was labeled two and three. Um, major arc shoots and small ones, of course, over here. Here are your auxiliaries for the air compressor, heat, etc. Little sign, etc. Um, despite the extreme neglect, this is holding up pretty well due to the wonderful robustness of 1904 engineering. Um, number 100, of course, was modified with a two-wheel pilot truck, um, in addition to the four main driving wheels, which, again, are fairly primitive suspension. These are bipolar motors. The motors go um, directly, uh, are mounted directly to the axles, um, because due to the fact that no suspended traction motors have not been invented. 
Here's the T unit, which due to slipping issues with the pilot, due to the pony trucks on the original S's, had all driving wheels, but still fitted a nice little cow catcher. These used leaf springs, still very primitive. Although the S3 was built in the 1920s, the original S motor design, the T motor design, is from 1913. Here you can see the motor housing, which again is mounted directly surrounding the axle. Um, traction motor blowers, which did not appear to be present on the S, um, was fitted to the T's. Each T bogey, again having leaf springs, and one. And of course, friction bearing truck, which show a wonderful example of friction bearings here with the axle, the bronze bearing, the layer of soft metal, and then we have your oil and oil pad, which applies the film of oil to the bearing for, um, which then create the, the lubricant film which prevents the metal on metal contact. Wonderfully, wonderfully preserved, wonderfully maintained. These were probably done shortly before they left service and have maintained, have, have stayed in that situation remarkably. All right, that's it for the tour of S unit number 100 and T unit number 270 something, 278 maybe.